I want to talk about async nodes, nodes that execute asynchronously, because they are different from latent nodes, which I made a video about in the past already, in that they can work in the quote-unquote background uh, and complete different pins at different times later down the line, but also keep the rest of your blueprint graph running. A latent node is going to store your blueprint graph until it's completed and then move on. Async node is going to allow you to move on immediately and at a later time finish a arbitrary amount of other pins based on what it is doing. Now, do pay in mind, while async nodes can be very complex, like calculating the first 10 million numbers of prime or 1 million, whatever this is, and run on their own worker thread, their default behavior is still going to be running on the main game thread. We'll make a separate video pretty soon about taking the work that an async node is doing and moving it over to a worker thread. For now, I just want to show you how to set up a fairly simple async node to begin with to get familiar with how everything works. So we're going to be reproducing this here. It's a delay with an interval, which has one pin that instantly moves on, one pin that will go every two seconds, not interval, and then one pin which only executes at the very end of this delay with these two values as parameters, of course. We're going to be using this project that I used for the latent node video uh, as well. You do need to set up some C++ to make these latent and these async nodes. Uh, don't worry, we're going to go through it step by step. It's not going to be like that scary, but you do need to do this in C++. This is not a blueprint uh, possible thing. I'm personally using Rider. You can use any IDE you want. I like Rider because it has tight integration with Unreal. You can make classes for Unreal within Rider, all that kind of good stuff. Feel free to check out my link down below the video uh, to check out Rider if you're interested. We are going to start off by adding a new Unreal class, which you can also do from Unreal itself. If you just go into your C++ classes, of course, you can make a new C++ class or classes and look for whatever you need. Uh, again, I'm doing this from within Rider. We'll go to all classes. I will name this one uh, Interval Timer. And we're going to make a new class of type U Blueprints A sync action base. Unlike the latent nodes where you needed to make a uh, separate object within your blueprint function library and stuff like this, async nodes themselves, as you can see, are entire like U classes in and of themselves. So in some ways that kind of simplifies things because you don't need to like make your own extra class and like instantiate that in weird ways. By and large the workflow for both of these things is fairly similar though. First and foremost, we're going to declare a delegate type because every single one of the output nodes on async blueprint node is going to be effectively just a delegate that you can call out at any point that you want. So we're going to declare a dynamic multicast delegate. Let's actually do one uh, with a parameter, just to show you that that is a thing uh, that we can do. So with, um, let's do just one param, and we'll call this f uh, updates interval, which is going to take in a float, uh, or I'll actually let's take in a integer for the interval count. And I will also make one uh, without a parameter, which is just going to be um, delay complete. Now if you have multiple delegates, like multiple output pins that you want to make on your async node that all take in uh, no parameters or the same parameter, uh, you can just reuse this type a couple of different times to make multiple like variables of it like we're going to do in a moment. This is effectively just declaring a type of object, but your object in this case is a delegate, an event dispatcher that you can bind to. Let's make these uh, U properties and they'll be blueprint assignable and they're going to be of these two types. So first F update interval on interval and then we'll make a U property again which will also be blueprint assignable and that's going to be F delay completed on finished. So again if you have something else that doesn't have a parameter that sometimes maybe you want to uh, call out from this async node you very much can just use this delay completed type to make another variable of this type that you can call out as a blueprint assignable U property. But for now, we're just going to stick with these two. Then you want to make a factory function in this, which is a static function 
that instantiate the actual object of this type of class. So it's going to be a function that we have on this u interval timer that creates a u interval timer. And because it is a static function, you don't actually need like an instance for it to exist in order to be able to run it. So this class can create an instance of itself with this. So that'll be a u function. And if that doesn't make full sense, don't worry, hopefully it will run it. It'll be blueprint callable, and we'll set that to being uh, meta equals parentheses. It needs to be blueprint internal use only, uh, being set to true. And then just like we did, if you've seen the previous video with setting a world context object and a category, we do that in here as well. What this is going to do is it's going to get the world context for this mode, for the function that we're going to be running, from the parameter that we call world context object. So with that u function uh, thing all written out, uh, you can put these like under each other if you really like prefer to, to make them a little bit more readable. This is going to be static and it's going to return a pointer to the type of object that it is, because that's what, again, factory functions do, is they make an instance of the class itself. So in this case, it will be a pointer to the u interval timer, and you can call this whatever you want. So let's call this just delay with interval. And that will take in the u object for the world context object, a float for the interval, and a float for the duration. You can put in, obviously, any arbitrary amount of parameters on top of this that you want. And then finally, we also want to make a virtual void activate override. So we have this activate function on the parent objects already. And we're going to be overriding that to activate it specifically in the way that we want to activate it. Now, after that, we can uh, make a private section real quick to set up a little bit of information that only this object itself cares about, like we're going to be using some timers. So I want to make a timer handle for the loop. I want to make a timer handle for when it is supposed to finish. Then I want to make a U property uh, for the U object, for the world context object, so that we can set it properly. And then I want to make a float for the interval and the duration as variables on this thing as well, because we don't have that anywhere yet. And it's nice to just be able to set those uh, as variables. Then also we make a void function for, we can call it cleanup. Uh, what I like to do is just make one for uh, finish, which is going to contain the cleanup code as well. And the reason that we need to clean up stuff is because we're going to be setting timers that exist outside of this object. So if we don't end those times when this object uh, gets terminated, those timers are going to keep running uh, needlessly. So we do need to like manually tell those timers to, hey, stop doing your thing once we're done with this node. So let's, uh, let's go top to bottom, shall we? Let's implement the uh, factory function, then the activate function, and then the finish function. So first and foremost, again, using Rider, we can automatically uh, create implementations of these, which is nice. We're going to immediately make the async task as a new object. So we do the u interval timer. We make a pointer. We call that uh, the async task. And we set that to being a new object of type u interval timer. So now we've created the actual async task object that's going to be running. Again, as I said before, this is still going to be running on the main game thread. If you want to move this to a worker thread so that it doesn't block uh, any of your other gameplay with like very computational heavy stuff like procedural generation and that kind of stuff, that takes a little bit more work. We'll get into that in the next video. For now, we just want to set this up. Uh, and we need to just set the world context object, uh, the interval and the duration of the newly created object that we have here to being the things that we get given in from Blueprint when we call this. And then we simply, uh, after setting all that stuff up, uh, we return the async task just like that. Next up, we have activate. So let's implement that. It's going to uh, call to its parents function. Uh, we can just leave that be. And here is where we're going to actually code in the entire functionality of our async node. So in this case, 
that's just setting up a couple of timers, but this can be as complex as you want to. You can have a bunch of other functions that get called, that call other functions, and just do their entire own complex logic all within this one node. Again, for now, we're going to check if our world context object is valid to begin with and wrap everything within that if statement because we want to get our world context object. And from that, we're going to get world and we're going to get the timer manager from that. And with that, we're going to set a new timer, which is going to take in our timer handle for the loop. And we'll need to know uh, its callback. So that will be in square brackets, this, and then parentheses, closing parentheses, and then we can make the like, little function here, the lambda, that it's going to run uh, every time that it uh, is supposed to tick. So we give in our timer handle loop, then we have the lambda for this, and do what it needs to do on the loop. So in this case, that would be uh, on interval broadcast, because the on interval broadcast takes in a uh, integer, we actually do need to also go back in here in private and create an int interval count so that we can give that in there and then we can do interval count plus plus and then it actually continues on with the rest of the parameters for this function. So this is a little bit annoying uh, to look at if you're not used to this because it seems like we are giving in parameters and then the function happens but what's actually doing is we're creating a function as a parameter here. You could also make this like an actual like separate function that you just bind to, but for something this simple, uh, generally it's like quick and easy to like do this in the form of a lambda. Um, so like this entire function that we have here, from here to here, is an argument. This is a parameter. It just happens to be a parameter that executes code instead of having some value. Next up, we have the in rate. So that's going to be the interval at which this timer runs and then whether or not it's supposed to loop, which is true in this case, because we do want to loop it. And then we just kind of do that again. Uh, but this time for the world context objects, we get world, get timer manager, we set the timer. This time it's the timer handler for finishing. And we do a lambda for this, again, because we're doing it on this object, on finish broadcast. And then it is trying to uh, get some code from my other uh, sample project which is not quite correct, so we're going to delete that. And in this case, we just do unfinished uh, broadcast, and we're going to uh, run the finish function as well. Uh, and this is going to be for a certain duration, which is going to be the duration uh, parameter that we have when we create this thing. And of course, this thing doesn't need to loop at all, which only leaves us with the finishing function. But just in case, uh, if the world context object for any reason uh, is not valid, we uh, just want to like, immediately finish. And really, unfinished broadcast probably can be part of the finish function to begin with. So this only really needs to run uh, the finish function, now that I think about it. So let's implement finish. So all that finish needs to do is it needs to uh, stop these two timers and then uh, tell this async task that it is finished and that it can stop and that it can like open itself up to be garbage collected and that kind of stuff. So first and foremost, we check if the word context object is valid, of course. So we can get the U world, and with that world we can get the timer manager and clear the timer based on the two timer handles that we have. We also broadcast on finished, and we can do set ready to destroy, which is just a function uh, that exists as part of this being an async task. So as a quick overview from start to finish, what happens here? is we will be able to call this static function. And what the static function is going to do is it's going to create an async task object for us. We give it some information that it needs to work context object and then some specific information for this task. In this case, that's going to be the interval and the duration. And then this returns that so that Blueprint can like do its magic. The moment it gets created, this activate function will run by itself and it's going to run any of the code that we put in here. In our case, this is just running a couple of timers. This one on a loop, so it's going to call out with a broadcast on a specific event dispatcher or a delegate with a certain number every single time this thing gets called out. And then this timer is just waiting for itself to finish, which will call the actual finish function, which will clear up uh, the, the timers that we assigned and exist. Then it will broadcast on finished, and then it will set itself ready to be destroyed by Unreal's garbage collection.
So that's how you set up an async task. Now let's recompile this and actually uh, put this to test in the engine. So back here in the test actor, instead of doing this move to location, uh, what we're going to do is we now want to first and foremost look up what I call this thing to begin with, because we're going to call this by the name of this static function that we made. So there's delay with interval. So if I look for delay with interval, we now have this async node that we made. As you can see, it has an interval and a duration. So let's set the interval to 2, the duration to 16, and print out a couple of things. So first and foremost, this thing is going to provide to you by default, and this is the instance, just move on with the rest of the blueprint graph. Then this interval is going to be running on a, in this case, 2 second, but that's variable, of course, a looping timer. So we can say 2 seconds have passed. And it's going to be calling that out with this interval count. So we can also then print out how many times it has uh, already gone through this. And then on finished, we'll only call out once the full 16 seconds are up. So let's say 16 seconds have passed. And with that, if we now play the game, you can see it says instant. And then after two seconds, it says zero, two seconds have passed. One, two seconds have passed. Two, two seconds have passed. And we'll keep doing this uh, until it reaches 8, at which point it will also say 16 seconds have passed, because then the entire thing will have finished, as you can see. It reaches 7, because that's the 8th time it does it, because it starts counting at 0. Uh, but just like that, you can see that this delay with interval now works entirely as an asynchronous node. I feel like I've said this a billion times already. I do feel the need to point out that this still very much is running on the main game thread. By default, if you set up an async task, it's not going to dispatch itself to a separate worker thread. You do need to explicitly set up some other code to make it. It's not overly complex, but I want to like kind of finish off this video here, keep this self-contained, and I'll make a separate video soon about setting this up to actually dispatch it to a different worker thread. And for that, we'll recreate the uh, function that finds the first X amount of prime numbers. Because that's one of those things that it's very heavy to compute, and you do want to put that on a worker thread, because you wouldn't be able to do that on your main game thread. So we'll set that up in the next one, which is just generally going to be a slightly more complex async task to begin with so it's a good step up from what we've done here and a very big thank you to all my patrons you can see them on screen right now if you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials there's a link down below to the patreon page to support me or alternatively as a youtube member and of course an extra massive thank you to my cave digger tier supporters sergey thomas and my cave student tier supporters oiku and Earl Monsville Erno.